Hello. Um, in this uh, example, we are given that y prime is equal to the square root of y squared minus nine. And we want to know, right? Um, basically, is there a unique solution to the point one four? Meaning that, right? Whatever the solution to this differential equation is, right? We have y equals to some function, okay? Um, this, the graph of that, is there only, so basically, is there only one, right? Curve. Uh, that goes to this point, okay? So we want to figure that out, or the, we need to figure that out by, uh, the way we can figure that out is to look at these conditions, okay? So first we need to figure out what values of X and Y is this um, function continuous? And F of X, Y is referring to this part here. Now in this case, uh, the function that we have is dependent on only Y, but um, you could have other, you know, you could have another variable in there okay, as well. The other part is that we need to figure out which values of x and y is the partial derivative of this function with respect to y continuous. Okay. So once we, right, once we answer these two, then um, we can see whether or not there's a unique solution. Okay. All right. So let's first go ahead and um, look at our function here. So we have that f of x, y is equal to the square root of y squared minus nine. Okay, so because we're dealing with square root, right? Um, we know that anything under the square root, if we're, you know, we're assuming real numbers, um, that anything under the square root has to be greater or equal to zero, okay? So we can use that to basically find the y values um, that make this continuous. So we're going to have y squared minus nine, right? We want to figure out for which values of y is this going to give us, uh, or is this going to be greater or equal to zero? Okay. All right, so that's not too bad to solve, right? Um, it turns out that it's going to be from minus infinity up to minus three, and then from three to infinity, where minus three and three are both included in the set. Okay, so. And write that down here. So f of x y is going to be continuous for y uh, for these y values. I'm going from minus infinity up to minus three, and we do include minus three because when you put minus three here, we do get zero. And then from positive three to infinity. So there's our solution set, okay? Right. All right, and if you, if you want, I can go over how, how I got that. Okay, you can do that on the side here. So basically, when you're solving this, you look at the look at the points at which where this is equal to zero. Um, so that's going to be y equals to plus or minus three. Okay, so just move the nine over, take the square root of both sides, and then from there we can draw our number line. We have minus three here and three. Okay, and then what we can do is pick a point from each region. So I can put minus five here, uh, zero here, and then let's say five is here. Okay. So we put that back into, into our inequality and see whether or not it's true or not. So putting minus five in here, you're gonna get 25 minus nine, which is certainly bigger than zero. So this is true, but zero in here, you get minus nine. That's not bigger or equal to zero, so that's false. And then again, put five in there, um, and so we get 25 minus nine, which is definitely bigger than zero. Okay. So whichever region um, is true, that's going to be part of our solution set. So we right, so we went from minus infinity okay, up to minus three, where it's in, it is included, and then from three to positive infinity. 
Okay, so a little bit of review on some algebra. Okay, doesn't always hurt to review that. Okay, uh, remember that math is a very cumulative subject. Okay, you can see that here. All right, so right, this is telling us that for these y values, this is, means that we get some output. Okay, all right. So the next thing is to look at the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Okay, so we're gonna take the partial of y squared minus nine, or I should say square root of y squared minus nine uh, with respect to y. Well, that's the same as this. Then y squared minus nine to the power of one half. And again, when we take the partial derivative of a function with respect to y, we treat the other variables as constant. Okay. So in this case, um, right, if there was an x here, then you would treat the x as a constant. But in this case, there are no x. So basically just taking the derivative of this uh, with respect to y. Okay, uh, so that's going to give us Using the power rule, we have y half, one half times y squared minus nine. Fact one, take the derivative of the inside part. And then we can go ahead and simplify that. Two and one halves cancel out. So we're left with y over. So this part I can put in the denominator. So that's going to be y squared minus nine to the power of one half, or like this. Okay, get y over square root of y squared minus nine. Again, just putting this part in the denominator that changes the sign, we end up getting this. Okay. All right. So now looking at this, um, it turns out that this is going to be continuous. Um, it's going to be very similar to this one, except that. Um, okay. Oh, I have a parenthesis here, and that should be a bracket. All right. So looking at this. Um, it's going to be similar to this, but the only difference now is that we don't want to include minus three and three. Uh, the reason we don't want to include those is because when we do, we get zero in the denominator. So we need to omit those uh, from our um, from our um, set. So it turns out that okay, partial f with respect to y is continuous for y belonging to this set. So we're going to go from minus infinity up to minus three. Okay, minus three is not included, whereas it is here. And then going from three to positive infinity. All right. So for, for these y values, right, for any of these y values, you'll get you get a value here, and that'll make that right, um, continuous. So now let's put this together. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay. And again, we're working with real values here. Okay, um, that's why right, that we're, we have this condition where um, if you have if these are greater equal to zero, then you're going to get real numbers out of that. Otherwise, if they're negative, then you get complex values. And we're not dealing with complex plane here, okay? All right, so let's see what we have. Okay. All right, so we have, right? So looking at these two, right? We have y equals, we have y equals three and minus three. So let's go ahead, I'll go ahead and sketch that in. So there is y equals minus three, there is y equals to three. Okay, so um, we want to see, right, we're going to take the intersection of these two. So the intersection of these two turns out to be this. Turns out that y okay, has to belong to this set. 
So going from minus infinity to negative three, and then from three to infinity. Okay. So that is the common, right? That's what's common between both of these. Okay, we have to, and we don't include, we can't include minus three and three here because it's in this set, but not in this set. So, we, right? so they're not in the same, uh, they're not, uh, it's not the common values here, okay? Right? So everything else is though, okay? Everything else is, so that's what we have here. So again, minus three and three, they're in this set, but they're not in this set. So we can't include them, right? We can't put them into the, um, into, we can't put them together, okay? In other words, we can't take, put them in the um, intersection, okay? All right, so, so looking at this, um, so I have an open right, boundary here, okay? Because again, we don't want our, our region to contain these values along this line, okay? And then looking at this now, let's go back to the original problem. We have the point one four. So let's just go ahead and map that point. So one four, let's say it's out here somewhere, and then four will be above y equals three, right? So let's go somewhere here. Okay, so there is one four. All right, so so based on our based on our work here, um, we can see that there will be a unique solution, okay, uh, for this differential equation, and um, it will be uh, within this region, okay. Right, so um, the graph, right? So the solution will come through here, and it will be the only solution for this differential equation. Okay? Um, so. Um, so the answer is yes, there is a unique solution going to this point, and it happens to be in this upper region. Okay. So we can go ahead and write our conclusion here. So there's a unique solution for y prime equals to square root of y squared minus nine going through to the point, or I should say the solution for y prime equals to this containing one comma four. Okay. All right, and our region's going to be basically uh, this region here. Okay. All right, so. So the region defined is Basically, y strictly bigger than three. Okay. So there's no there's no restriction on x here. Okay. So that's what we have, right? So this is y bigger, strictly bigger than three. Okay. So that contains our uh, that region will be our solution. Okay, or give us a unique solution. Okay. Because that's containing our point. Okay, so I'll stop here and uh, see, see y'all later.
I'd like to go to a restaurant.